Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about color grading. A couple weeks ago, I released my very first preset pack for Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw. I had a lot of really good feedback and I had a couple people that asked me if I could do some tutorials on how to get certain color looks on images. And I thought this might be a really cool exercise, particularly with vintage color and images that were shot on film years and years ago and how you can replicate some of that look into your own images and what you have going on with a modern digital camera. And so what we're going to do in this example is I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this, but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to copy the color grade from a specific image and we're going to apply it to a target image. And I'll show you what we're working with. For my source image here, I've chosen this image, which is by one of my favorite photographers. This is Saul Leiter. And this was an image that was shot um, probably in the 1950s, maybe early 1960s. He used Kodachrome a lot. It's probably neither here nor there because what we're seeing is a print. So this was either in a magazine or it was on a wall type print. And so anyway, it's an analog color process and has a great look to it. I love this kind of royal lavender look that it has that permeates the image. And what I want to do is I want to take this look and apply it to my own image here, which was an image that I shot on a Sony trip a few months ago in Brooklyn. This was the trip we did for the 135 millimeter lens. And I like this image because it has a weird abstract in the front with these blurred out flowers, but it has a lot of nice colors that we'll be able to work with. And I want to apply that image over. And this image just right out of the camera here does not really look much like our other image. So this is is a really good one for grading. So before we get into this, I want to talk through a concept that some of you may be familiar with, but if you're not, when we talk about color grading, there are essentially three areas of the image that we're talking about. There are the highlights, there are your midtones, and there are shadows. Highlights are the brightest part of the image. They're the parts of the image that start going towards what we perceive as pure white. Shadows are the opposite. They start going towards what we perceive as the blacks or the darkest parts of the image. And the midtones, depending on where they fall, that can affect the overall contrast of the image. Now, in addition to just pure light that we're talking about, this would very easily relate if we were working with black and white images, Ansel Adams zone system, that kind of thing, where you have black, you have white, and you have shades of gray in between. But with color images, you also have a tint in these different areas. And this is what starts having a big impact on the image and gives you a, a really interesting flavor overall in the actual image. So a lot of times our brain and our eyes will see a color, like we see a highlight in an image, and we kind of just assume it's a pure white. And you'll realize upon further investigation that sometimes it's not. Sometimes it has a warm or a cool tint to it. And the same with the shadows and certainly with the midtones as well. And so if I go over to my source image here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to blow this up just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the foreground color and I'm working in Adobe Photoshop. And by the way, I'm working in Photoshop, but this same technique or the two techniques I'm going to show you apply to any image editor. So you can apply this to Lightroom. You can certainly apply this to Capture One, anything that supports curves, adjustments, things like that. But I want to be able to show you because I want to be able to draw some swatches and stuff, what we're dealing with overall. So I've double clicked on my foreground color and I just, I get the eyedropper here. I just want to sample some colors on this image. So I can sample, for instance, this purple, or I can sample the pink on the flower. What I want to do is I want to look at the shadows and the highlights first. That's really important. So if I look at the darkest point in this image, and I think it's this gentleman's uh, pant leg that's sticking out below the umbrella. And so what I want to do is I want to sample that color there. And I'm going to see over on my, my color picker here that it's not actually a pure black. It actually drifts into magenta territory. So this is kind of a tint that we have. Our eye may see that as a black color, but it's not. It has a little bit of magenta to it, and it's not exactly a dark, dark black. If you look at, you've got HSB, hue, saturation, and the brightness here. The brightness is actually 12%, so it's not as black as it seems. And so I can do the same thing. The key takeaway here is we have kind of a magenta shadow. If I look at the highlights or what are the brightest parts of the image? Well, I do have some reflections on the wet pavement here. I don't want to select those necessarily. I'm looking at the skin tones here because this is what uh, I'm really getting a lot of color with. And so if I select any of these colors, maybe on the back of the hand here, you're going to notice that I get a warmer color. It's sometimes a green, sometimes drifts towards yellow or orange, depending on where I click. And so this is going to be what I'm sampling out of here. So the takeaways here are for the highlights, we're getting a warmer cream tone, maybe a little bit leaning towards green away from yellow and for the shadows, we're getting that magenta cast. And so the easiest way to replicate this, I'm going to cancel out of there. Let's go over back to our file here. 
and I'm going to click on the tab at the bottom for my adjustment layers and I'm going to select a color balance layer here and what it's going to do is it's going to give me a non-destructive color balance layer and the way this is laid out is just like what we're talking about if I look at the top I have a drop down box here and I can select shadows midtones and highlights and so based on what we know about the previous image let's start by selecting the shadows and what I'm going to do is just move this slider towards magenta over here and I'm going to do it kind of slowly because it can get intense fast. And now I've got kind of a magenta look to my shadows, which is exactly what I'm going for. I'm going to hold down the Option key and click on the visibility icon here, this little eyeball. So this is before and this is after. You can also turn that layer on and off depending on what you want to do. Maybe a little intense. I'm just kind of going by my own eye here. But that's essentially what we're, what we're going for here. And so what I'm going to do is, that was in the shadows. There's a magenta. I'll back off on that just a little bit. Let's go to the highlights. And for the highlights, what I want to do is I want to start adding some yellows in just a little bit, which looks nice. And I might bring a little bit of green in there, but maybe I want this to go more towards orange. Well, orange isn't an option here, right? In our RGB color model. So what do we do? We go back to seventh grade when they told you how to mix paints. So how do you get orange? You mix red and yellow. And so that's what we're gonna do. We already have some yellow in there. So if I start putting a little bit of red in, you should start to see a little orange. And that's looking pretty good. Let's do a quick before and after. Let me just turn that layer off. So there's before. Here's after, so we've not only warmed the highlights, but we've also brought in a lot of that magenta tone. Now, I'm going to go to the mid-tones. I'm going to bring in, whoops, I'm going to bring in just a little bit of magenta here. I'm just going off of my own visual look here, and it's starting to look really good. And in fact, if I compare it with the original, the main thing that I'm seeing here in comparison is that this being with a modern digital camera is a lot more saturated. So you can kind of play with it from here. Now, these techniques that I'm showing you are going to get you about 80 to 90 percent of the way there. So if I wanted to continue this, I would work on it some more, but I might add another adjustment layer and add a curves layer, and then let's add a hue saturation layer. So let's start with the hue saturation. I'm going to bring my saturation down a little bit. And probably what happened is because we increased the contrast, uh, that also results in a bump in saturation. So these are minimal adjustments. Let's go over to the curves layer because it's analog process. I'm going to bring this the, the um, shadows up and over a little bit, shelf that off so we kind of get a fade going on there. And that's starting to look pretty good. And we have a color grade now that resembles our source image applied to an entirely brand new image. So that's one way of doing it. I'm going to show you a second way you can do it that's a little more mathematical here. Um, but first what we're going to do is just if you're working in Photoshop, uh, this is something that's very handy to do to keep things organized. I'm going to select all of these layers. I'm going to hit Command G on the keyboard and that turns them into a group, into a folder, and then I can turn that entire folder off. So we're going to turn that off for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the second technique that we're going to use here. And again, highlights, midtones, shadow detail. So what we're going to do is I want to paint some swatches onto a new layer. And we're going to use this and we're going to use a curves adjustment layer to actually map these to where they're supposed to be on the new image and it should look kind of color graded like the source image. So let's do our swatches first. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Shift, Option, Command, N is in Nancy or N is in new. That creates a new layer. And if I grab my brush tool, if I hold down the Option or Alt key, this allows me to sample a color and then I can release that and paint with it. So what we're going to do is grab those shadows. Remember it was the pant leg over here. I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to paint a swatch over here. This is easier than trying to remember color values. We'll just grab some swatches. And then I'm going to do another sample for my highlights. I'll use the back of the hand here so we get kind of that creamy, not quite white. It's warmed up a little bit. So we have our highlights. We have our shadows. We've just painted two swatches. Now I need to get my midtones. So how do we get these? Well, I'll show you a little technique here. You could guess. That's one way of doing it. The other thing you can do, let's turn this layer off for a second. I'm going to select my bottom layer here. We are going to make a color selection. So if I go under select at the top of the screen here and I select color range, we can select a color range. And if I use this drop down menu, we have midtone selected. So I'm just going to select my midtones, say OK. And then it made a selection based on my midtones. It just selected those colors. Now what I want to do is hit Command J on the keyboard. That's my shortcut. What this does is it creates a brand new layer and copies that over. So if I turn off the bottom, bottom layer, we just have midtones. Now you may be saying to yourself, Ted, there's still colors here. Which one do I pick? Well, let's take it a step further. If you go up under the filter menu, go under blur, let's say average, it will average all of these into one color. It's kind of a purplish hue, go figure. I'm going to go ahead and sample that. Let's turn our top layer back on and select it. And I'm going to paint my midtones 
into that layer. So we now have, let's turn off the middle layer, I've just got a swatch that I've created from the highlights, midtones, and shadows of that image. So I'm going to copy that, Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. Move over here, I'm going to Command V. I'm going to paste that into our image here and I'm going to just bring that up in scale so I can get to it really easily. Let's move it over. We're good to go. So now what I need to do is create a curves adjustment layer and we're going to map our swatches to the white point, midpoint, and black point. Let me show you how to do that. First thing you're going to do, select your background here. And I'm going to go down here and select a curves adjustment layer. Whoops, not exposure, undo. Let's select curves. And I'm going to show you a mistake that you could possibly make here. Notice I was quick. The curves adjustment is over the swatches. We don't want that. We don't want it. So if I have a layer in Photoshop, it, 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 anything, it affects everything below it. So I just want to bring that down because I don't want it to start coloring my swatches because then we're going to have a mess. So on the curves adjustment layer here, you're going to see three little icons for these little eyedroppers. These are the tools that we're going to use to do our mapping. Now, if I double click, or if you actually, if you hover over, it'll show you what each one does. The top one, it's actually upside down. The top one is your black point. The middle one is your midpoint. And the, the bottom one is actually the white point. So let's start with the white point. Let's double click that. And when I double click it, it allows me to select a color that we're going to map everything to. And so the first thing you're going to notice is, wow, it's not selecting anything but white. What is the problem? I'm even selecting dark areas of the image. Well, this is a little quirk in Photoshop. You got to get used to. Let's cancel out of here. When you create a new curves adjustment layer, it by default selects the mask. We don't want the mask selected. We want the curves selected. So we want the adjustment icon selected. Now, when I double click on that icon, I can start picking any color I want in here, right? Well, we're not going to pick any color we want. We're going to pick our swatches that we made from the source image. So let's go ahead and pick the highlights here. And when I say OK, what it's going to do is pop up a little window that says, do you want to save these new target colors as defaults? No, I'm just using them in this one image. So just say no. If you select yes, they'll be there next time. You don't want that. So select no. Now, that color chip or that color swatch is in memory. And and it allows me to click on various parts of this image to apply that as my white point. So what you want to do is select one of the brighter parts of the image. Now I didn't, in my source image, I didn't select those reflections. I selected a skin tone. So I'm not going to do this highlight on our shoulder, which is probably the brightest part in the image. I'm going to select this flower here in the front. And notice that that shifted all of my, there's a good one. So it keeps the, 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 the swatch in memory and it allows me to select various parts of the image. So you might have to click a couple times just to get it like you want it, but I've got it. I got those creamy highlights. Now let's do those shadows where we get our magenta cast. Go ahead and double click that. Let's select the shadow chip here, this shadow swatch. Say OK. No, the darkest part of our image is probably this blurred out part in the plant up here. Let's select that. Ooh, look at that. We do indeed. I'm going to try a couple different ones. Nope, that's definitely it there. We have our purple cast there, or our magenta cast. And then what I want to do is get my midtones hooked up. So let's go ahead and double click on the midtone or the midpoint here. I'm going to select this swatch here that we created. Say OK. Say no, no to defaults. And then the most neutral part of this image to me is probably on her dress. I know it's really small here, but this neutral part where there's very little texture. Let's go ahead and click in there. Oh, that looks good. Let's go ahead and turn our swatches off here. Let's compare it to the original. There's the original. Oops, let's turn the swatches off. Looks pretty good. And compare that to my source image. Now that looks really nice, actually. I'm very happy with that. Um, the only thing I might do from here is go in um, in my curves, which are already there, and I might, you know, bring my fade up here on the shadow detail a little bit. But that looks really close, and I'm starting to match that analog look. So these are two different ways of doing essentially the same thing. One's a little more mathematical, it's a little more exact, and the other one I was kind of eyeballing it. But that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking a look at three different areas of the image. We're looking at the highlights, the mid and the shadows. And when you understand how to tint those and where to put them and how contrast works, then you can start to copy color grades over. And this gets you probably 80 to 90% there. We can do another video talking about how to maybe get it even more specific. Um, one thing I have noticed in here is again, the saturation, you know, we might want to mess with the layer with that. We can get selective with colors, but if you have any questions, drop them below. Remember presets are on sale. I'll put a link to those as well. This is a similar technique that I used on a whole bunch of images to come up with presets that I use a lot. I'm sharing them with you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.